Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. Well, let's talk about why most ribbon tweeters are bad. So we've kind of entered a time of ultra detail where um, companies are just simply putting uh, ribbon tweeters in a lot of their bottom models. And I think that this is a really bad idea because you might, as a company, sell more speakers because of that. Uh, and because a lot of people think that Ooh, we're getting more detail, it's faster, it's more fresh, it's more edgy and informative, fine. But you're also losing a, a lot of that stability and, and that traditional sound where treble, mid-range and bass kind of blend together in, in a natural way. So this is a, a video that I've made basically just to tell you guys about what it takes to make it sound uh, natural, like, like it's supposed to sound. So currently to date, I haven't really heard a, uh, a proper ribbon tweeter speaker that like has everything. I've heard a lot of expensive ones in, in speakers that usually cost 50 to like a couple of million uh, dollars. And, and those usually sound exceptionally good, um, really, really good, very close to natural. And I then get it why, why people are buying this technology. So, um, yeah, that, that, that is basically what you're getting <clears throat> when you're getting ribbon tweeters. You're getting this fresh, fast, edgy, informative type of sound that has that, that is just very light on its feet. And it's a, it's very appealing because because you get this bigger sound stage there's more separation and stuff like that and um <clears throat> yes yeah, so, sadly some of these designs sound uh, harsh and light and mechanical and i think that in order for a lot of uh, speaker manufacturers to prevent this from happening what they do is that um they dial the um the sound back so it's not harsh light and mechanical but then again Th this is what I mean. It it just feels like held back because of that. It doesn't feel like it's fully releasing the sound. So that is the problem I have with uh, ribbon tweeters in, in general, that it takes a hell of a lot of money to produce uh, ribbon tweeters that are really, really, really good because you just need a, a solid, stable build that uh, requires, th that is basically required in these speakers. Like... I mean, the only speaker that I can think of is like the uh, the Veritas Arastro speaker uh, one and two. These are um, these are really good speakers. And if I had to listen to Ribbon Tweeter, that would catch my attention, and that would be um, like a sound that I could listen to probably for twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years. Also, because I I know some of the tricks on on how to make it even more natural. So <clears throat> I strongly suggest that people don't buy these cheap um, speakers with, with ribbon tweeters because they're usually just not very long lasting in sound. You, you easily get tired of, of listening to that sound after a couple of months. So normal dome tweeters, I actually think that that's better because we're just, it, it's, it's like, the good old stable technology that we're able to get more out of price wise but yeah once in a while there is like a really impressive uh, ribbon tweeter uh, speaker that's pretty cheap i know that proac makes some uh, speakers with ribbon in them they're pretty good for the price and you know like monitor audio i think the lowest speaker that they have like pl200 that's only like two thousand bucks new also very impressive for the price but again <clears throat> these are the good examples and i would still say that with still with those brands that that make it a lot better than, than the average brand they're still very flat they're still very plasticky they're, they're they're just lacking that grunt that bite that naturality and those are basically some of the best ones on the market so my uh, like I said here, you know, a really good ribbon tweeter is like two, three thousand uh, dollars. Usually, you have to get something like a Raven or a custom, uh, customized um, in-house tweeter, uh, ribbon tweeter, like uh, Verity did with their speaker here, Verity Sarastro. 
and and that, that's that's a proper thing but you can't just buy that and then put it in a random speaker you need like really insanely good parts to to support the sound really expensive filter and these units here are also not uh, cheap these are like uh, double layered membrane units from audio technology and you know you have to get into this whole religion type of sound where you're just doing everything properly at a high level in order to make the tweeter seem reasonably natural and uh, yeah it, it can just easily take off into this hyper detail where you're just listening to gear you're just not listening to music anymore because of these ribbon tweeters i mean they are really impressive also in these um, headphones these um, expensive headphones like abyss and audis and heat headphone I mean, they they are really impressive. They do a lot of stuff that's really, really good. You just have to remember that they give you that detail by usually skipping the natural part and not giving you the um, the bite, the grip, the grunt, the, the full release of the sound. So just, you know, just take this as a warning so when you're listening to the speaker that you're considering that is, is that thing, is that negative there? Does that exist? Am I then supposed to buy this or something else? L listen to that. And, and also listen to Verity Sarastro speakers uh, and, and just listen to how much better that, that uh, is compared to the normal price speakers on the market. And like I said here, um, you want to kind of look at this video better than buy wire video because once you have a double single wire um speaker cable it usually makes the uh, the treble a lot more stable a lot more natural um so you also kind of want to look into that if you're really into this ribbon tweeter kind of thing so yeah also remember that um if you have like a window open and and and, and a gust of wind hits the uh, the tweeter it could take it out, so you have to change both of them. And that could, you know, in theory, cost you a couple of thousand bucks. So also take that into consideration, because um, it happened to one of my friends, like I've written here. And he actually had a, um, I can't remember what kind of speaker he had, but but he had, he had a, I can't remember if it was Veritas Arasto or another speaker, but it was a pretty expensive speaker, so... Um, Luckily, the manufacturer um, covered it, but you can't expect that from, from most manufacturers. Um, they would expect you to, to kind of deal with that yourself. So again, uh, kind of a warning to, to owning uh, a good ribbon tweeter. Um, some of them are so expensive that in theory, it could cost you like $5,000 or perhaps even more if it's like a really expensive speaker getting uh, them both changed so that's not fun having to deal with that and 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 yeah i i would say that you know i still am a bit envious of the uh, revitus arastro uh, two speakers um that is like the one speaker that has a ribbon where i'm like damn you know i i could Sometimes I feel like I want to listen to this instead of my audio notes because just once in a while, like maybe once a month. And then also like once a month, I would probably also like to listen to a Martin Design Bird 1 speaker that I think has uh, some of the best diamond speakers, uh, diamond trebles um, in the world. So, so those are like my three speakers. If I ever had to settle with three speakers, then those are like the three speakers that I would consider relevant. And that I think that, you know, most people in the world should, should really um, consider, even though they're all kind of uh, pricey, especially the, the Verity speakers. So yeah, that, that's my take on the matter. And uh, if you've got a comment, just leave it in the, uh, the comment field uh, underneath the video. Have a nice day. Bye.